Hey guys, Courtney Patrick here. I am the founder and freelance brand consultant at Create and Propel. And today I'm going to talk to you about the art of storytelling. Now this is so near and dear to my heart and it's my absolute favorite thing to talk about with new clients because it could not be more important in today's environment. And I'm not just talking about COVID-19. Even before then, we are operating in a completely new world. We have completely transitioned from the importance of bricks and mortar to having that online presence and online space. And yes, even though there is a place for traditional forms of marketing, really what this work from home time and lockdown time has taught us is the importance of engaging with people online. But the more people that are online, the harder it is for you to stand out. And that is where storytelling plays an incredibly important role role. So I want to start off by talking to you about a few statistics that are so important for us to get some gravitas to what we're going to talk about. Now there is a study that was done by an organization and it's called the Meaningful Brands Study, which you can Google. And what this organization found is that people would not care if 77% of global brands would disappear. And in the UK, that is even more at 94%. And of course, I operate from the UK, so that's going to be a super important statistic to my clients. Now, what that study also found is that people think that 60% of the content that the top 1,500 global brands push out is clutter. And if we talk about that in even simpler terms, guys, right now, 77% of businesses could go bust, and that's probably a very scary statistic in a COVID-19 world, and no one would even blink an eye. And that also means that probably 60% of your content is crap, if we just speak very, very simply here. Which breaks my heart because being a marketeer and working with lots of different businesses, I can't tell you the amount of times that I have stayed late to push out a customer letter or published a monthly content calendar. And it's probably been part of that clutter group. But also, let's go back from a business owner perspective. You have spent your life and probably your life savings on bringing out your unique product or service to the market. And 77% of those brands could go bust without any anyone caring and that that's very very sobering statistic so what it's saying is that meaningful brands are incredibly important to your bottom line and I am going to tell you some initial information on how you can go about avoiding that and become part of those meaningful brands So one thing that customers always ask me is, okay, Courtney, I understand the stats behind a meaningful brand, but what is a meaningful brand? And really, if we put it simply, meaningful brands are the ones that make us stop and smell the roses. They're the ones that we constantly think about. We get excited about engaging with. We get excited to share about with our friends and our family and our colleagues. These brands don't just push out content for the sake of it. They have something to say to people. They tell a story, they hook us in, and we want to listen and we want to engage and learn more. We want to be part of their using a common word, their tribe, which is what a lot of brands try to seek for today. There's actually a lot of science behind what goes into a meaningful brand. So if you think that marketeers do not spend a lot of time on learning this science, then you are incredibly wrong. And I want to bring that to your attention today because again, it's, it's about making sure that you understand the importance of this. So as human beings, we are driven by stories. It's part of our genetic makeup. And what I was reading is a Forbes article that brought attention to a Harvard Business Review study that found that character-driven narratives increase the level of oxytocin in our brain. Now, if you're not a scientist or you don't know anything about the chemicals in our brains that make that up, what oxytocin is responsible for is triggering empathy and it makes us want to cooperate with others. So if you go into a big room full of people and you immediately try to find that one person or that group that you can speak to, that's when oxytocin 
oxytocin is present. But from a brand perspective, when you tell a story that drives people, it starts to form a connection. This person wants to cooperate with you, so you're hooking them in. Now, there is another piece of science which is so important. I am going to urge you all to go and search on YouTube for Simon Sinek Golden Circle, which of course comes from his book, Start With Why. And the reason why I really like Simon's example is because he breaks down the science of our brain in a very simple way. So what he says is there's two parts of how we make a decision in our brain. The first part is done in the neocortex. Now that's the analytical part of our brain, the rational part, and it's also associated with language. So if I say, what's two plus two? I really hope that you would say the answer is four, but whatever your answer might be right or wrong, it'd be very easy for you to answer that question for me. Now, the other part of our brain is the limbic part of our brain, and that actually drives human behavior and decision making. And this is about trust and creating an emotional attachment to the things that we buy and engage with. So here's an example of when you might use that brain. I'll ask you how or why did you choose your partner? What was it about them that made you go, yep, yeah, that's the person I want to spend the rest of my life with or be with for a while? Now, you might be able to drum up an answer for me, but you would not be able to instantly recount like you would that two plus two equals four question. And that's because you made that part with your brain, not with the rational part of your brain, but that limbic part of your brain that was all about that sort of gut feeling that made you choose that person. Because if it was just simply the rational part of our brain that made the decision, we never make one because there's billions of people in the world. There's probably hundreds of millions that have similar physical characteristics or personality traits to that person. And you'd be constantly getting more information that would make you never be able to make a rational decision. It's irrational. That's why we can't put language to it. And that is the part of our brain that actually makes the decision for us. It's that neocortex that rationalizes that decision and makes it actually happen and triggers that. So the importance of this is saying that meaningful brands write stories and those stories trigger inside out decisions. So how do you actually go about doing that through your storytelling? Well, if we bring it back to that Simon Sinek golden circle, which again, you should YouTube or pick up this book right here, start with why, had that upside down. Uh, and it breaks this down in a lot more science. I'm giving you obviously just the top level here. So there's a what, a how, and a why in how we tell a story. So the what and how are very simple. It's the what you sell and the how you do it. So maybe you sell hot dogs. The what is the hot dog. The how might be that you have a machine that, that pumps out a hot dog in, in 15 seconds or whatever that might be. Now, let's look at it from your competitor set. Anybody can steal those two things from you. And they are. If they're not doing it now, they eventually will do. That's why patents run out. People can eventually take those things from you. Now, if we bring it back to our storytelling and being a meaningful brand, uh, I always say that the what and the how are how people marketed in the 1950s. So a fishmonger would say, I'm selling fish and it's this cost, and that might drive people into the store. But now there's clutter, there's information overload. So how do we actually go about attracting and connecting with these people? And that is through your why. The why you exist, that underlying purpose that's driving your business forward. The question that I always ask your customers, if, if everyone was out there selling hot dogs, then why did you need to create one? What was your purpose for getting out of bed in the morning? And that is going to create that connection that triggers that limbic part of the brain that gets people to trust your brand and to want to engage with you. That is the meat of your story. Of course, you need to say what you're doing and how you do it because it's important. That's context to that decision. But if you really want to bring customers in and you really want to trigger that loyalty, this is how you go about telling an impactful story. So let me give you a very, very simple example because of course in that book, it talks about your Starbucks, your Apple, all of those brands that people love to talk about the stories. And, and yes, these global corporations will really hit home on why you need to have this. But a lot of you that will be watching this are likely to be a small business, maybe even a micro SME. So it could just even be a sole trader that's looking at this and understanding how do I actually go about connecting with my customers. So let me give you an example that may feel a little more real. So let's say you sell scarves or insert your product or service there. 
and you see that actually it's really popular with the kids these days to go to a blogger to push your product out. Uh, so you go to this blogger, you negotiate a fee which you think is pretty extortionate in comparison to maybe publishing on that bulletin like you used to, and you give them the how and the what. You say, I sell scarves, they are 100% cotton, they're in blue, pink, and yellow, they're at 10 pound a pop, and they're designed in the Cotswolds, but they're produced in China. So this blogger goes out there and, and she gives that exact information to her audience. But you're not really seeing the ROI that you were hoping to from pushing it out on that channel. So you start to look into, well, why is that the case? Well, technically, what that's probably going to do is make somebody go, oh, you know what? I, I was actually looking for a scarf. So now I'm going to go on eBay or Amazon and look up scarves that are red, yellow, pink, blue, that are designed in the Cotswolds but made in China. And that will bring me probably thousands of different options for me to choose from. It's probably going to be a lower cost than yours. So why would I actually go about purchasing that product? Now, let's go back. Let's go back to that influencer. Let's give them the what, how, and the why. So we say a scarf, 100% cotton, blah, 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 designed in Cotswolds, produced in China. And the reason why I started up my country, my company is, not my country, my company, is because I wanted to help local artists get their beautiful visions into life so that women around the world were showcasing beautiful scenes of the place that we live and we love. Now, I might not instantly go and buy that scarf if that blogger shares that story, but I guarantee that is going to stop me in my tracks and make me want more. I'll probably go to the website. If any of my friends say, hey, Courtney, I'm looking to buy a scarf, I'll go, you know, actually, I remember reading this really lovely story about this lady who uses local artists to create these designs so that women around the world showcase the Cotswolds. And so there you go. You've caught my attention, and that is going to increase your visibility. That's definitely created a connection with me. And now I want to learn more and do more to help your business thrive. And that is how you go about telling an impactful story. So guys, I do highly recommend that you give this book a read. And of course you can YouTube anything by Simon Sinek and the art of storytelling. There are so many different facts and figures out there that really bring it home of why this is so important. And it's as simple as keeping that structure of what, how, and why. So yes, you need to say what you're selling and how you're selling it. But no matter if it's a Facebook post or a keynote speech or whatever it is that you're pushing out online, you need to have the why drive your story. And that needs to sound the same across every channel. So of course I talked about this in my last video about brand consistency, but today we're focusing on what is it that made you wanna start this organization? What story do you wanna tell your customers and how can you connect with them? And guys, it's not all fluff. There is science that backs. If I go back to that meaningful brands study, it found that, oh, that having a meaningful brand brand will increase your existing customer purchase intent by over 40%. It will increase purchase intent from cold prospects by over 20%. And it will allow you to more successfully price yourself at a premium price point. So quite simply, meaningful brands that tell stories make more money than you do, which is why you want to incorporate this advice into your business. If you have any questions about storytelling, why it's important, how you can go about doing that, or you'd like to collaborate and actually define that story together, this is something that I love to do with my customers, and I would love to put you in touch with people that have worked with me before and had a great experience from that. Please get in touch. You can find me at my website, which is www www.createandpropel.com or you can find me on LinkedIn, linkedin.com slash in slash Courtney R. Patrick. Uh, but do check out my site. And guys, I look forward to speaking to you next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video.